Hey everybody, Angry Poncho here, continuing my let's play of Metroid Prime. Alright, it is time for us to head for our next suit upgrade. We won't be, we won't be getting it for a few videos yet, but uh, at this point, we're, uh, that's our goal, so we can look forward to it at this point. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take out these uh, space pirates here. You can actually can use the plasma beam on these standard pirates, and it just totally annihilates them. Three or four hits, and they'll go down. Because it actually, uh, when you hit them, you can see that they light on fire, and that does continual damage even after you quit firing. So I usually just fire at each one like two or three times, and then just sort of just walk away, because they're going to burn to death. It's actually easy to demonstrate on this next guy who pops out of the ceiling here. Just hit him a couple times, walk away. You see the radar little dot disappears when he dies. Oh, well, they come more time. And then they just, uh they burn up. That's it. Yeah, fairly impotent. He's actually like hiding in like a little hole up there. I don't even know. It's not like that's it's it's actually, it's actually a tunnel that goes anywhere. It's just a little empty space that he popped out of. Alright, anyway, we're coming up here to uh, move the crane. Because where it is next to the wall right now is pretty much useless for us. So get out our scan visor here. And, oh, there's some scan points up here that I didn't pick up. Let's get that. Wow, what well, here? Anyway, you scan that main console and it actually activates the crane. It's interesting how the, the scanning visor can actually like do things rather than just like scan. It's more like a computer interface kind of visor. But uh, with that motion, we now have a grapple beam in the correct location. What you're going to do is uh, line it up so that you're facing this thing, and as soon as you get the grapple, run to your right. That way you can line it up and fly right over to the door here. And this uh, scan point here will just move the crane back. We don't need to mess with it. Now we head in here and solve this kind of weird underwater puzzle. And it occurred to me the first time... This is actually... Uh, the rest of the LP that you watch will actually be my second playthrough of a lot of the gameplay because we're getting to the part of the game where things can get uh, difficult and or complicated. And so I'm going to be doing practice runs before I record. Which I haven't been doing previously because it wasn't really necessary, but now it's become that way. And it occurred to me when I was doing my practice that this puzzle is kind of weird in that, like, even though we've got the gravity suit, we still get increased jump height underwater. Which, when you think about it, the gravity shoot, uh, suit, oh, I went the wrong way, the gravity suit should counteract that because it allows us to maintain normal physics. But for some reason, we still get more height out of those jumps. Anyway, we're going to come back here into the room with the puzzle pillar, just jump down to the left and go into this door. That requires the ice beam. And we can proceed. I'm actually, there's some bomb boost here. I'm just actually just going to jump through. I'll probably take a couple hits, but it's a lot faster. It's worth it. Honestly, you can sit there and kill each one of them if you want to, but I never really worried about it. Now, something interesting here is the artifact crater. Like the, uh, the artifact site, or, or whatever it's called. I forget what the actual name of the place is. It's right out there. Like, we're adjacent to it. Like, that stuff on, the, on top there actually can be seen from those places. And the Phazon mines are actually mines directly beneath that. And it's really interesting how like the ge geography of the game ties itself back together like that. Alright, now we get back down here. Oh, let's see. Let's try it. Freeze them. Use a missile. Easy enough, right? And this guy just takes the same thing. We need the wave beam to start opening these doors down here too, because we're back into that section of the game again. I think we're going to have some invisible fire to Let's go ahead and use our plasma beam. Just two or three shots on each one is more than enough to finish them off, too. So. I mean, you'll see after, after I hit them, I kind of just walk away, because it's not particularly an issue. Now, I think, uh... Yeah. We want to go up here. We're going to try to make our way up to the top of this room. We should fight uh, four or five space pirates along the way, I think. I already killed the majority of them. The rest are up here hanging out in the ceiling. And again, just light them up with the uh, plasma beam and shoot the end of the I'm not even sure if I took a hit there. Nah, I haven't taken a hit yet. Alright, nice. And there's some boxes over here I recommend you take advantage of. Go ahead and get your uh, missiles and such refilled. I find that no matter how many missiles I can carry, I'm always, I always seem to be running low. Kind of annoying. Anyway, now we proceed through here. Oh, that was a quick jump there. And where are we at now? Alright. We're moving back through these places we've been before. Now, this next room we've actually been in before. Now, we've actually been in all these before. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about now. But we're, we're, we're heading towards another fight, and I'm, I'm anticipating it already. Alright, let's get, get through here. 
We have some wave pirates in here, if I remember correctly. But before I like start engaging, oh crap, get off that platform, I need to use that. Small off already. Yeah, three charge shots continues to be effective against the wave pirates. Which, I need to remember to get a scan of those guys. Anyway, use a power bomb with this rubble over here. And then the ice beam will open up the door. And we can go in here and get the map data for the Phazon Mines. Which, to, to get from me, is particularly useful. Just because it's easy to get turned around in here. It's like a little, like, city almost. Under the ground. And we see we can zoom out and see that the majority of the mines that we haven't explored is... is significant. We have actually haven't been in a lot of it. And so we'll get to all of it uh, before the game's over, of course, but it's coming up soon. Phase on Mines will be our, our main uh, locale for the rest of the game. That and Talon Overworld, of course. We always end up back there. Go on, just die. You're not, you're not really that threatening. And now we got some uh, guys down here. I'm just gonna use the. Uh, oh, wait, let's go ahead and get a scan on him. Yeah, new creatures entering. Alright, they're power troopers. Yeah, all those uh, ones that are for different beams, you get a scan off of each one of those, like each uh, each color. We got the, uh, so far we've had the ice, the power, and the wave ones. We haven't gotten to the other kinds yet, but there will be there will be uh, plasma ones. I'm sure you guys can anticipate that. There's one for every other kind of beam. Why would you the plasma? And I tell you, these power ones are the most annoying, just because there, there's no uh, wave buster or ice spreader or flamethrower that you can use to kill them easily. The only thing that you can do is charge your uh, power beam and just spam the hell out of them. Alright, now where do we want to go now? We already got the maps. We want to go down here. Boom. Hop right in. And now we get to enjoy a wonderful fight with another uh, pirate. And I actually haven't collected the data on camera, so let's go ahead and do that. An elite pirate! Phase on enhanced space pirate, incredibly strong and well armored. They're potent foes, etc., etc. We're actually just going to use the uh, plasma beam because it's particularly effective. Whenever he's not charging up that uh, thing in his hand, you can hit him. Which means before and after he uses that attack, during uh, his little animations and stuff, you can get him. Generally, just light him up, hit him in the face with it. And again, just make sure you, if he's doing that hand thing, he's just going to absorb everything. So just hit him at any other time. And then he goes down. With the uh, plasma beam, it's fairly easy to take those guys out. I mean, they're they're not very threatening at all. And you don't have to use any missiles either. That's great. That's wonderful. Well, we got some ice parts in here, I think, too. If I can hit with the ice spreader. Oh! Oh, I didn't... Oh, I got one. Awesome. Cool. I just fired the ice spreader randomly. I just try to see if I can pick one of them off. And I actually, I actually managed to hit one. It kind of surprised me. It seemed like it went through the floor. <laughs> like it actually went, went down into that little ball maze and froze some stuff down there. So, all right, check that out. Now, uh, we reached a sort of a checkpoint on our path here, and I'm gonna stop off in the save room back over here and go ahead and save my game. Because as you can see, the next room we're gonna proceed into is entirely new, unknown territory. So, it's always good to save your game as often as possible when you're playing Metroid Prime. Yeah, especially if your GameCube is as unreliable as mine. I think it shits out all the time. All right. Well, uh, I'm not sure how much farther we're actually gonna go. I think that I may, uh, I may add another minute or two to this video, but I'm done recording for now. So I'll probably see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play Metroid Prime, when we will continue on our uh, exploration of Phazon Mines and hopefully find our way somewhere down here and get the Phazon suit. So I'll see you guys next time.